Complex fractions are fractions that have fractions inside. To simplify a complex fraction, find the common denominator, or LCD, of all the small fractions, and then multiply each small fraction by that LCD. This will clear all of those small fractions so that the complex fraction is now simple. So let's look at what we mean. So in this fraction, this complex fraction, we have a fraction on top and a fraction on the bottom. We, on the top, we have a, a denominator of 4, and on the bottom we have a denominator of 14. So let's look at those two numbers. 4 has a prime factorization of 2 times 2, and 14 has a prime factorization of 2 times 7. So those two are in common, so we'll write the 2 once, and then we'll write this 2, and then we'll write this 7. So our LCD ends up being 4 times 7, which is 28. So we're going to take that 28 and we're going to multiply the top fraction by 28 over 1 and the bottom fraction by 28 over 1. Now the reason we do this is because we can take 4 into 28 and we get 7. That gets rid of the denominator of that top fraction. So on the top we now just have 19 times 7. On the bottom, 14 will go into 28 two times. That gets rid of the denominator on the bottom fraction. And so now on the bottom, we just have 95 times 2. So if I take 19 times 7, I get 133. And if I take 95 times 2, I get 190. And there's nothing that will go into all of that. And you can check that in your calculator. If you do that 133 and then your fraction button, and 190, and then hit enter, if it just gives you exactly the same thing back, it means your fraction is already simplified. If it gives you something, oh, I was wrong. It's a good thing we checked it. When I typed this into my calculator, it gave me 7 over 10. And that meant that it could be divided, both of those could be divided by 19. So good thing to check. Let your calculator help you. So in this problem, we have several small fractions. We have a denominator here, a denominator here, a denominator here, and a denominator here. So we want to look at those four denominators. And actually because this one is repeated, we don't have to list it. I just list all the ones that are different. And we're going to look for a common denominator. This is x times x. This is just x. This is x times x times x. So we want to copy and either repeat our common and then bring down the ones that we don't have. The LCD here is actually just x times x times x, which is x cubed. So we're going to multiply each of our little fractions by x cubed. So we're going to take this fraction and multiply by x cubed over 1. And take this fraction and multiply by x cubed over 1. Take this fraction and multiply by x cubed over 1, and take this fraction and multiply by x cubed over 1. So we'll write it out a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. If I have 5 over x squared times x cubed over 1 plus 4 over x times x cubed over 1 over 1 over x cubed times x cubed over 1 minus 3 over x squared times x cubed over 1. So what happens is really remember this is really x times x and this is x times x times x and anything that matches we can cross out. So this will cross out with two of these and that leaves us with 5x in that first term. Here, this is x times 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 x
times x, and this 1x will cancel out one of these x's, which leaves us with 4x squared. Then here, this is x times x times x. This is x times x times x. So all three of those cancel out, and that just leaves us with 1. Then in the final piece, we'll look at this. This is x times x times, oh, just x times x, and this one's x times x times x. So these two x's cancel out these two x's, and it just leaves us with 3x. And then this, although it looks messy, is our final answer. All of the small fractions are gone. This is an order of operations. You can see there's no fractions in there inside the big fractions. So we just need to follow the order of operations. There's nothing inside parentheses, so we don't need to do anything inside the parentheses first. Remember, we'll do the top and the bottom separate. Lee. So we'll do 5 times 5 first. So we get negative 7 minus 25 on the top. And let's copy the bottom. Then we do multiplication and division. Well, there's no multiplication or division on the top, but on the bottom there is this multiplication. So I'm going to copy the top. On the bottom we have minus 7 times a negative 2, which is a positive 14, so we have plus 14. And then on the top and the bottom there's only one thing to do in each place, so we'll do negative 7 minus 25, which gives us negative 32. And on the bottom we'll do 8 plus 14, which gives us 22. And then we'll divide by 2 on the top and the bottom to simplify it. So we get negative 16 over 11 as our final answer. And that should help you do this section homework.